have you ever wanted something so bad you could just or to look at it a different way are you looking for just a little respect <clears throat> when you get what you want does it have to be served up with an insult Jesus has a word to say on that subject Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 through 12 let's take a look Verse 7 and 8 say, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. To everyone who asks, for everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Let's pray. Father, help us, especially with these words, to receive the words of Jesus, to act on them in our daily lives, and to be people who are expectant of what it is you are doing in our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a very interesting passage because it actually encourages us to try to do things, to change things, and not just to sit in a corner and to contemplate your navel and hope that you're becoming holier and holier. That's a given. You should be becoming more godly, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But in fact, God is giving you the opportunity to affect the world around you, to affect the events in your life. You're supposed to ask. You're supposed to see. You're supposed to actively knock on that door and try to get an answer. You know, the old saying is, God help those who help themselves. And that can be good advice. But it's not biblical. You won't find that in the Bible. And sometimes it can be anti-biblical. Don't ask God for anything. Do it yourself. Well, there's a time... And I've said this over and over again, but it's good to repeat it. There's a time for yielding, waiting on God. But there's also a time for striving, when God wants you to do something. And there's no hard and fast biblical rule for when is when. You just have to, and some, what we generally do, and I, I don't have a better answer. We generally try to do it. And if you find yourself beating your head against the wall, that's a good time to yield. Sometimes, when you're beating your head against the wall, God wants you to seek. God wants you to knock. God wants you to ask. Well, I'm not getting an answer. Maybe God's not ready to give the answer. Generally in my life, I've found when I think, oh, God wants me to do this thing, usually that doesn't mean that afternoon. Usually it means i got to work at it, and oftentimes over years, before the thing I think God wants me to accomplish starts happening. And so, because you feel like God wants you to do something, and you ask, and you seek, and you knock, and you don't get an answer, that might not mean stop. If you believe God asks you to do something, keep doing it, no matter what the answer is, because God is preparing you. For that eventual thing that he wants. But Jesus says, ask. There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, he encourages you. Ask. Seek. Knock. Now, as a pastor, I'm tempted to start adding conditions and caveats and addendums and warnings. Oh, well, don't be greedy. Don't be arrogant. And after all, we are a society addicted to things. But Jesus adds no conditions, gives no warnings. In fact, he's really much given you a blank check. Here, what will you do with it? Ask and keep at it. Matter of fact, Barclay, in his translation of the New Testament, he translates this passage this way. Keep on asking. 
keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Because the word used there in the original Greek is, it's, it's an active word. It's, it's not a one-time deal. It's an ongoing process. And so it says that, what I've been saying, which is, keep at it. Don't be like a little child, and I tried it one time and it didn't work, so that's it. Jesus says, keep it up. Keep seeking. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Later, in another place in the Gospels, Jesus tells a story about an unjust judge. And a woman goes to him and says, I, I need justice done in my life. And the judge says, well, you can't advance my political career, so I don't care. Go away. And she keeps pestering him and pestering him and pestering him. And in Jesus' language, the judge says to himself, well, I'm a creep. But if I don't let this woman have justice, I'm she's just going to annoy me to death. So I'm going to let her have justice. And then Jesus finish up on that story as, if a creep can do that, what do you think God will do? John's translation. Jesus says ask. God wants you to ask. He wants to be involved in your life. Why? Why does a parent want to be involved in the life of their child? To guide the growth process. See, the problem is, you adult Christians, you don't think of yourself as a child. But it would help you every once in a while if you did. You're not there yet. You haven't arrived yet. You're not at the end of the line yet. I don't care how old you get. I've discovered that the absolute worst thing about getting old is no matter how old you get, there's always somebody older that goes, Ah, you're just a kid. You don't know what old is. <laughs> you're not there yet. You haven't arrived yet. God wants to be involved in your life. And he will answer. Now, of course, there are some checks and balances, right? God's not going to answer your prayer. Lord, please murder this person for me. God's not going to honor greed or arrogance. God's sovereign. He answers all requests according to his will. I mean, those are obvious. Scripture tells us, pray according to God's will. That's obvious. You know that. You didn't need the pastor to tell you that. We just need to be reminded of it. But God wants to be working and involved in your life. And he wants you to not sit around and go, well, this is my station in life. I was born in poverty. so I'll just live all my life in poverty. And I'm nobody. I didn't go to school. So nobody will listen to me. So I just won't try to tell the gospel to anybody because I don't have anything to God does not want you to sit around in desperation and go, this is it, there's nothing more. God wants you to seek. God wants you to knock. God wants you, in modern language, to go for it. To do something. To move. To be active. To glorify Him with how you live your life. Verse 9. Jesus asks, which of you if your son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? It's an illustration and it's something that you should get right off. Of course. You give some typical situation. If your kid asks, for bread, you're gonna give him a rock. Here, eat this. If your kid asks for for fish, are you gonna give him a gopher snake? Here, have this. No, you're not gonna do that. I mean, fathers especially, we like to tease our kids, and moms don't like that. But hey, that's one of the ways you toughen them up. <laughs> we like to tease our kids, but we seldom mock our kid. Here, here's a fish. Looks kind of like a snake, Dad. We don't do that. Here, eat this rock. What, you think I made of money? Have a rock. No. We don't do that. If your kid asks for something reasonable, you want to try to provide that, right? I mean, that's that's normal. And that's, what, that's why Jesus is using this illustration. Of course it is. You know what's right. See? And you're just you. And you know what's right. Don't you think God knows what's right? Don't you think God 
wants to give good gifts to his children as well. He knows you need it, but he still wants you to act. He still wants you to seek. He still wants you to knock and try to get through that door that's closed to you. Christians sometimes use the, well, I I tried to do this thing, but I didn't have an open door to ministry. It sounded like revelation or something. Knock! Just because the door is not open doesn't mean it won't open. Doors are made to open. Knock. See, ask. He wants to spend time with you, guiding you in your process of growth. He's not going to answer you mockingly. The Greeks have a have a myth about the goddess Aurora. She goes to Zeus and says, I have this mortal man that I'm in love with, and I want to want to ask you to grant him eternal life so that we can be together. Zeus grants the gift mockingly. He grants Tithonius eternal life, but he also ages eternally. Yeah, thanks a lot. God Almighty is not like that. He doesn't give, oh, you wanted the fish? Well, here's a shark. No, he doesn't do that. He gives good gifts. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. You can trust him. Because he desires to give good things to you. Verse 12. So, in everything, do to others what you'd have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Wait, time out, put on the brakes. What does that have to do with asking and seeking and knocking? You know, I've heard a lot of people talk about the golden rule. I never hear anybody pointing out that the golden rule is based in prayer and seeking God. The more time you spend with God in prayer, the more God will influence your actions with others. And that you you will treat people the way you want to be treated. The point of Christianity is that we become Christ-like. Godly. And that has to do with everything that he's been saying before that. If you are Christ-like and godly, you will answer people the way God answers you. You... I just got something the other day, and my first response was, jump in a lake, I'm not going to do that for you. And then I thought, is that how God treats me? That was wrong. And I went back and swallowed my pride and said, yeah, let me help you with that. The golden rule is the high watermark, the moral high watermark of the world. There's no higher way of looking at other people and of your responsibility of how to treat other people than the golden rule. Do unto others as you've had others do unto you. Now, Jesus was not the first to pronounce the golden rule. The Jews had it. The Greeks had it. The Romans had it. Confucius had it. But they all said it negatively. Do not do to others what you would not have others do to you which is still the golden rule, is just negative. Jesus twists, and this is one of the things that tells you he's God. He's always got a way to twist it and make it better. Jesus twists is that he doesn't say, oh, just avoid doing wrong. He tells you to actively seek to do good. So when you see that bumper sticker that says practice random acts of kindness, that's not new age, that's Jesus. Actively seek to do good. One time, I was a teenager still, brand new Christian. I was at the movie theater in line, you know, fighting, elbowing with everybody to get the popcorn. And, and the girl behind the register, she was just, you could tell she was having a bad day. And I got my popcorn and my soda, and I said, thank you very much. And you should have seen her face change. That cost me nothing. And it blessed her. 
And you don't have to give someone the Taj Mahal to make their day. Just give them a little kindness. And you have just done a godly thing. <clears throat> Jesus says, this sums up the law and the prophets. Do unto others what you have others do unto you. This is everything in a nutshell that God wants to tell you. All that stuff about go here, go there, do this, do that, uh, make this offering, it better be 10%, or if you're over here, then it's 30%. All that stuff, the most important thing of it, is whittled down to this fine point of the pencil head. Do unto others as you have others do unto you. And that includes how you treat God as well. Rabbi Hillel was approached by a man. Rabbi Hillel was a contemporary of Jesus. Approached by a man who said, I'll convert to Judaism if you will stand on one leg and recite the Law and the Prophets to me. So Hillel stood on one leg and quoted the Golden Rule to him. And then he said, the rest is commentary. Go and learn it. <laughs> we ought to practice that toward God as well as each other. Because I guarantee you, that's how God treats you. Doesn't seem like it because the way I want to be treated is to be rich and lay on a couch and have, have when beautiful women fan me and feed me grapes and, and never do any work. That's how I want to be treated. Apparently it doesn't mean exactly what I thought it meant. <laughs> God practices that rule with you. He gives you the honor of treating you the way you really like to be treated. With honor and R-E-S-P-E-C-T. And we ought to give that back to him as well as practice that with him. The rest is commentary. Go and learn. And God is already giving you respect. He treats you as he wants you to treat him. Now, what does that mean for you? I'll sum it up like this. If you are an unbeliever, if you've never given your life to Christ, you need to confess that Jesus Christ is God and ask him to save you and come into your heart and make you a new person. If you are a believer, you need to commit to do God's will. Let's pray. Father, we seek to do your will. And though for us it's a matter of having to recommit daily, sometimes many times a day, help us to not lose sight of that. Help us to seek. Help us to ask. Help us to knock. And not just for things for our lives, but for our life to be godly in Christ's life. To touch others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.